Can you just like summarize like really quickly why uh, orthodoxy is uh, like why you think that is like the the true form of Christianity? Yeah. So the easiest summary, I guess, would be that when we look at the first several centuries of the church, the first thousand years of the church, that's the undivided East-West church, right? That whether you're uh, Orthodox or Catholic, everybody kind of agrees that it's that one church for roughly the first seven councils of the first thousand years. So when we understand how they practice Christianity and we look at the councils, we look at the canons of the councils, we can see that that is the Christianity of those centuries. And in essence, it doesn't change. So the, the faith that the apostles handed down is essentially the same thing that's being stated and explicated and solidified and clarified for the next seven, yeah. seven centuries. So that is, is, is one, that's one way to know between, say, Orthodoxy and Catholicism, which is the true church. But if you mean the true religion at all, I would say that Orthodox Christianity is the fulfillment of a lot of the Old Testament prophecies. So you get prophecies about Jesus, when he would be born, under what conditions, under what empire, what would transpire, what he would do, his life, his death, his ministry, his resurrection, dozens and dozens and dozens of places in the Old Testament that Christ fulfills those. So that's one proof. And then I would say that um, in regard to other world religions, other world religions kind of have fundamental problems in their epistemology and in their metaphysics that negates them as being religions which can ground the possibility of knowledge at all. So that would be like the transcendental argument. So um, those are some of the reasons why I would say Orthodox Christianity is the true religion. You know, like if you actually look the, uh, you know, the the history and like the you know time period, it's kind of like uh, yeah, it's, it's because the the Catholic Church actually that was the divergent, right? Like they diverged from like you know the the unchanging kind of you know Orthodox way, right? Yeah, that's our view. For that's sure. how it actually works. Yeah, uh, but uh, also like. Right, like today, I found a pretty interesting like take. Um, you know, like what, what is it? Um, like so, there's some principles that like are shared with uh, all like world religions, kind of. And like, why like uh, why did God like not send message that could be like accessed by the whole entire world population, like and not only like uh, you know uh, <coughs> kind of Europe. North Africa and like uh, West Asia, you know, with Christianity. Well, so if you're talking about like during the period of the Old Testament when God called the nation of Israel, uh, the Orthodox view is that all of those people who died before Christ came, they weren't necessarily deprived of the gospel because Christ preached the gospel in Hades. This is the what Peter mentions that Christ went into the realm of the dead and preached the gospel. So St. Cyril of Alexandria says even the dead had the possibility of hearing the message of Christ, right? But the people that die in the Old Testament. So there's some, there's some means by which God can reach everybody, but it's not because of false religions or God doesn't like um, use every false religion as a means of salvation. There's elements of truths in all the world religions, which we would call. Yeah, exactly. But w so that would yeah. be the that would be the seeds of the logos or so the early church fathers called that lo the logo spermatikoi. Um but they and they point to Christ, but the problem is that they're mixed up with a lot of error and superstition. So the fullness of oh, okay. the fullness of revelation comes in the apostolic deposit, what the apostles handed down as the Christian the full revelation both in scripture and tradition. Yeah, 